Have you ever wondered how pilots control the role of an aircraft? Welcome to the fascinating world of aeronautics, where the mystery of flight control unfolds. Let's talk about ailerons, the hinged flight control surfaces located on the outboard trailing edge of an aircraft's wings. These unsung heroes of aviation play a vital part in controlling an aircraft's role. But what exactly is a role? Picture an aircraft moving around its longitudinal axis, that imaginary line that runs from the nose to the tail. This is what we call a roll. As the aircraft rolls, it tilts to one side, all thanks to the ailerons. These small yet powerful components work in pairs, moving in opposite directions to control the roll of the aircraft, guiding it left or right. So, the next time you see an aircraft doing a roll, remember, it's all about the ailerons. So, how do these ailerons work exactly? Well, to understand that, we need to first delve into the basics of aerodynamics. A vital principle here is Bernoulli's principle, which posits that an increase in the speed of a fluid corresponds with a decrease in pressure. Now apply this concept to an aircraft wing. The wing is designed in such a way that air moves faster over the top surface than the bottom, creating a pressure difference. This difference in pressure generates lift, the force that counters gravity and enables the aircraft to ascend. But how does the wing's shape impact this lift? This brings us to the concept of angle of attack which is the angle between the oncoming air or relative wind and a reference line on the wing or airfoil called the cord line. When the angle of attack increases, more air is deflected downwards, which increases lift. But beware, too high an angle of attack can lead to a stall where the wing loses lift. Now let's bring ailerons into the mix. These hinged flight control surfaces sit on the outboard trailing edge of the wings. By altering the shape of the wing, ailerons can increase or decrease the angle of attack and, consequently, the lift. When the pilot moves the yoke or stick in the cockpit, the ailerons deflect. If the yoke is moved to the left, the left aileron rises and the right one lowers. This increases the angle of attack on the right wing, generating more lift and causing the aircraft to roll to the left. The opposite happens for a right roll. Remember, though, that ailerons alone don't turn the aircraft. They're all about roll the rotation around the aircraft's longitudinal axis. Turning involves other control surfaces and forces, but that's a topic for another time. In essence, ailerons manipulate the aerodynamics of the wing to control the aircraft's roll. Let's dive a bit deeper into the operation of ailerons. When you're in the cockpit of an aircraft, the yoke or stick is your primary control device. It's your direct line to those clever ailerons we've been discussing. Now consider this. You're flying along, and you decide to make a turn. Your instinct might be to just turn the yoke in the direction you want to go, right? Well, that's only part of the story. When you turn the yoke left, the left aileron goes up, and the right aileron goes down. This causes the left wing to generate less lift and the right wing to generate more lift. The result? The aircraft rolls to the left. Now if you turn the yoke right, the opposite happens. The right aileron goes up, the left aileron goes down, the right wing generates less lift, the left wing generates more lift, and voila, the aircraft rolls to the right. It's a beautifully simple yet highly effective system. But here's an important point to note. Ailerons alone don't turn the aircraft. Yes, you heard that right, they roll it. It's a common misconception that turning the yoke or stick directly turns the aircraft. But in reality, it's the roll induced by the ailerons that initiates the turn. Think of it like this, the ailerons set the stage, they get the ball rolling, quite literally, they tilt the aircraft's wings, and thus its entire frame, in the direction you want to go. But the actual turn, that involves a little more coordination, a dance if you will, between different control surfaces, which we'll get to in our next segment. In essence, the ailerons are the unsung heroes of flight control. They might not get all the attention, but without them, our ability to maneuver an aircraft would be severely limited. So next time you're up in the air, spare a thought for these humble hinged surfaces, tirelessly working to keep you on course. Remember, ailerons are all about the roll, not the turn. So, if ailerons don't turn the aircraft, what does, you may wonder? Well, that would be the rudder's job. The rudder, located on the tail of the aircraft, plays a crucial role in turning the aircraft by controlling its yaw, which is the aircraft's rotation around its vertical axis. While the ailerons are responsible for the roll, the rudder controls the yaw. To complete a turn, both these elements must work in harmony. This is because when you roll the aircraft using the ailerons, it induces a yawing motion in the opposite direction. 
This opposite yaw is called adverse yaw. And it's here that the rudder comes into play. By applying rudder in the same direction as the aileron input, you can counteract the adverse yaw. This process, known as coordinated flight, results in a smooth and balanced turn. So imagine this as a dance between the ailerons and the rudder. The ailerons lead by rolling the aircraft, and the rudder follows by aligning the aircraft's nose in the direction of the turn. But here's the catch. There's no immediate force in the plane that brings it back to level once you've completed the turn. This is where the pilot's skill truly shines. Pilots must actively control the roll by neutralizing the ailerons and rudder inputs. They must carefully judge when to stop the roll and start leveling off to ensure a smooth and controlled flight. Remember, flying is a constant balancing act. It's about understanding and managing the forces at work and using the aircraft's control surfaces, the ailerons and the rudder, to maintain control and direction. It's a skill that takes time and practice to master, but once you do, the sky is truly the limit. So, to make a smooth turn, it's a dance between the ailerons and the rudder. And that's the beauty of flight. A harmonious ballet of aerodynamic forces and pilot inputs performed thousands of feet above the ground. Ailerons didn't just appear out of thin air, though. The invention of this pivotal flight control surface has an intriguing backstory, steeped in controversy and competition. In the late 19th century, a British scientist named Matthew Piers Watt Bolton first conceived the concept of ailerons. In 1868, Bolton patented a system that used aileron-like control surfaces for lateral control of an aircraft, an idea far ahead of its time. However, the aileron as we know it today didn't come into widespread use until the early 20th century. And it was then that a contentious legal battle ensued over the invention's patent rights. The protagonists of this dispute were none other than the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur, and a fellow aviation pioneer, Glenn Curtis. The Wright brothers had devised a method of wing warping to control roll, which they claimed was infringed upon by Curtis's use of ailerons. Curtis, on the other hand, argued that ailerons were a distinct innovation, separate from wing warping. The legal wrangling intensified, clouding the origins of the aileron. Eventually, the U.S. government stepped in during World War I to resolve the dispute, acknowledging the Wright brothers' patent on aileron control methods. This recognition played a significant role in shaping early aviation history and industry practices. By around 1915, ailerons had gradually replaced wing warping as the preferred method for controlling an aircraft's role. And that's how ailerons, a crucial part of modern aviation, came into being. So there you have it, the secret behind the role of an aircraft. We've navigated the world of ailerons together, uncovering their crucial role as hinged flight control surfaces on the wings. We've seen how they manipulate the aerodynamics, altering the wing's shape and the angle of attack to increase lift. We've delved into the cockpit, exploring how the yoke or stick controls the ailerons and how these in turn roll the aircraft left or right. But remember, it's the coordinated dance with the rudder that completes the turn. We've also journeyed back in time, touching on the historical controversy surrounding the invention of ailerons. From the Wright brothers to Glenn Curtis to British scientist Matthew Piers Watt Bolton, we've seen how this pivotal control system shaped early aviation history. If you enjoyed this journey through the world of ailerons, don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and stay tuned for more fascinating insights into the world of aviation.